I'm Dr. Carrie Horn, author of A Soul Aligned, How God Heals His Creations, and Heart Known Series Workbook, a practical application workbook for biblical healing. In this video, I'd like to talk with you about something that I see God doing, and I am really blessed to be in a unique position that he placed me in, of course, to um, talk with people about things that they don't normally talk with other people about, um, and to be able to have a window into what God is doing at, at, a, at a given moment, what theme is he raising with his people. And one of the things that he's been doing is he's been raising certain memories and uh, unresolved issues in his people. Now, when we don't know what that is, when we don't know what's going on, that God is the one, and, and we have been raised in a counterfeit church with counterfeit doctrine where they say that this is the devil who's sending these things. When we don't understand that God is the one who sends these things, that God is the one who's sovereign, when we're denying the power of God and we're saying that the devil is doing all of this, we have no understanding. We lack understanding about what is truly happening. And when we lack understanding about what's truly happening, we lack understanding about how to deal with it, how to handle it. So the first thing we need to be in agreement on is that God is the one that's sovereign, not the devil. God is the one who sends these things, Isaiah 45, 7. And that we are the ones who have to make the decision about when God sends these things, when they raise to the surface, who are we going to turn to? Whose power are we going to acknowledge? Because God is the only power. It's not that he has more power than the devil. He's the only power. The devil has power when we give him the, when we hand over the only power we would have had by choosing God. That is where the devil gets power. Those are the three fundamental truths that we have to be in agreement on in order to understand what's going on, in order to understand how to handle what God is raising to the surface. If, you, if those are new to you, please replay that section and really sit with what that means and where it is in scripture and sit with God's spirit on what the truth is. Because if for any reason you continue to believe that the devil sends these things, you will not know what God is doing. You will not be able to pick up what he's doing in your life. You won't be able to receive it because you'll be focused on some power that the devil has that he doesn't. And in so doing, you will be giving away what you could have had in God. Now, the other thing that I want to mention is that when certain memories of unresolved issues of suffering, of what the world calls trauma, though God does not use that word, trauma is just unresolved suffering. And God does require us to resolve our suffering because he has sent certain experiences in our lives in order to build us, in order to build us for what he knows is good, not for what we think is good, not for what makes us comfortable or whatever else. We have to look at what he knows is good, not not rely on our own understanding. So when God is raising a memory, which oftentimes mental health calls these flashbacks, and they have a whole description about what that looks like. Here's what I want you to understand. If you think that what's happening is that your memories are attacking you, your trauma is attacking you, you're going to be focused on what is attacking you. And we know what attacks us. The devil attacks us. What God sends, he is going to use for good if you choose him. But if you don't choose him, the devil is going to attack you with it. So there are two things that are going on at any given moment. That is the spiritual battle that we're facing. We're not screaming away spirits. We're not doing any of that. The spiritual battle that we're facing is our flesh doesn't want to return to God. Our flesh wants to try to take control and wants instant gratification, doesn't want to sit and 
deal with what God sends. It doesn't want to be built. Our flesh is in opposition to God. It fights against the spirit of God. That's the battle. So in all things, we have to choose God, even though our fl- that's the desire of our flesh. We have to circumcise from that. We have to recognize what our flesh is trying to do in a given moment and cut it off, discipline our physical flesh, get into our heart and spirit and choose God. That is how we fight the battle. That is the battle. The battle is in us. It's not something outside of us that has some sort of power. The power that is given to the devil is when we hand over who we are in Christ. When we hand that over by choosing the flesh and placing our focus on the enemy through idols, through fear, through not returning to God. Now, if we have that fundamental understanding, fundamental wisdom about what the nature of the war is and what God is doing, then in all things, when that starts to come up, we're going to learn how to relate with our feelings, relate with our experiences, relate with ourselves, relate with God in a way that we are searching for what God is doing in this situation. We're not trying to pray it away or scream it away or anything else. We're not even like verbally saying that I rebuke you, you know, something like that, which I don't really see that in the Bible. Rebuking is an action. It means you turn away from the enemy. And if you're turning away from him, you need to turn to Christ, not to self, because self is a trick. That's still choosing the enemy. That's still choosing an idol. We have to turn away from what we're rebuking towards God. Now, do you see why calling something a flashback and understanding it as your trauma, your condition, your syndrome is causing these things to just continue to come up in your brain? When you think of it that way, now you're afraid Now you've abdicated control over to a thing, a syndrome, a condition, and an idol to treat it, and you're completely denying the power of God, the power and sovereignty of God over you, over your life, over everything in your life. If he's sovereign, then he's sovereign over what rises up in your mind, your heart, your feelings over every experience that's happened in your life. And he has an intention for good. He has good plans for you. And in order to pick up those good plans, in order to receive them, you got to choose him. You got to know that he's the one who's in control of everything. You got to live into that. And I want you to know that one of the things that God is using right now to call his people in is affliction. Physical affliction, issues within the family, issues that are coming, old memories that are coming up that are, it's now time to resolve. These are things that God sends for his purpose. And he's stirring up some grief. He's stirring up some grief and some discomfort in his people. And we know that God does not do that willingly. But he does do it if his people have gotten far. He does do it if he needs to get our attention and bring us in. He does do it in order to discipline and cause us to conform to him, to discipline according to him and his good will. So I don't want you to look at these things, whether it's experiences or memories or anything that is going on in your life that is difficult. These things are difficult. We weren't promised an easy life. We were told that we needed to suffer for Christ. We were told also that God was going to afflict us. We even see in the Bible that when he comes and he restores us, he's going to remove our afflictions that he sent. That's what the Bible says. We need a way to be able to relate with this with the understanding, with this understanding that perhaps might be new to you. It probably is. I wouldn't doubt that. 
It's new to most of us if we've been deceived in the world into thinking that these are syndromes. It's new to us that God's the one that sent these and he sent them to build us and to teach us and to hold us close and to not let us become comfortable in the world. But with this new understanding, we also need a way to be able to relate with our feelings, to be able to receive God's ministry, to return to him. And I want you to know that the very first thing you need to do is fast and pray. Fast and pray. And you need to know that the purpose of fasting is not just to not eat, like the world says. The purpose of fasting is to return, to rend our hearts to God, to feel godly grief that leads to repentance, to let him deal with us, to let him raise those things. If you have been taught in a counterfeit Christian church or Christian doctrine that these things are sent by the devil, many people start to say, oh, I'm not going to feed into that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to deal with that because I know where that comes from. And they start to, and they repress what God is sending, what God is using to speak to his people. The devil does not send that. God sends that. He sends it to deal with you, to relate with you, to heal you, to reveal his glory. And when you're receiving the ministry of Christ, that is exactly what's going to happen. When you start dealing with these things and with him, he is going to speak to you. He's going to heal you. He's going to give you his spirit of peace when you return to him and he's going to reveal his glory in that he's going to prove himself to you. That's his will. That's what he wants. Even to the extent that when Christ prayed in the garden of Gethsemane, he prayed for his glory to be revealed to us. He wants us to know that he is the son of God. All throughout the Bible, that's what we see, right? God says, I am the Lord, your God. These are the things I'm going to do. I am the Lord, your God no one else. There is no other God before me. There is no other power before me. And that includes Satan. He is not a power before God. So your very first step, first and foremost, is to return to God in fasting. If you want to know more about fasting, there is a video on this channel called Why We Fast. I recommend that you listen to it so that you understand and you get into the right position and the right frame of mind, the right heart about what it is that you're doing. It is not a fast. I've spoken to people who've done fasts and then they go and like binge sermons on YouTube. That's not fasting. That's not return to God. That is return to an idol. And I realize I have a YouTube channel, but my goal in this YouTube channel is to shepherd you back to God, not to me. So when you are fasting, you got to be with his spirit, not on technology, not stuffing your face, not doing any of the things that the world causes you to distract with. You want to sit down and make a list with God and say, Lord, I'm going to, I'm going to enter into this with you. Please Tell me what are the idols that I need to remove. And then you make an honest list of all of the things that you're going to remove. If you need to set boundaries with things like that, like you need your phone, you have kids or something like that, then set a boundary. Put your phone in a place. I put my phone in my junk drawer and then I check it like at certain times of the day. Um, I don't have young kids, so it's it's a little bit different. Uh, I If I need my computer for work, I say, okay, I'm going to use my computer during this, from this time to this time, and then I put it away in the cupboard. I don't leave it outside to tempt me. Um, I have a window of time where I eat from 12 to 4. I'm not real hungry in the morning, but I do tend to be hungry at night. I tend to distract at night with food, and so that's a time where I need to be removing the tentacles of the flesh off of my heart and spirit. I need to be circumcising from my sinful flesh. I need to discipline my physical flesh. And then you spend three days praying and returning to God. 
letting him, listening, don't be doing all the talking. Christ said, we don't need to be praying many words. Don't be doing all the talking because that is your flesh. You need to be in your heart and spirit, listening to God's spirit, rending your heart to him, journaling out your feelings, certainly bringing your grievances and your concerns and your desires Bring that to him. I desire to, uh, to hear you, Lord. I desire to have a relationship with you. Ask him to return to you. Ask him to convict you of what you need to be dealt with in order to be right with him. Ask him to minister to you. Open up your Bible. Read scripture. Listen for his spirit to guide you through those three days. And he will return to you and he will reveal his glory. But then it doesn't mean that it stops there, okay? It doesn't just stop there. You have to continue to receive God's ministry. And sometimes I see where God proves himself to people and they receive that with joy and they're just so over the top, over the moon with, you know, the fact that God has removed fear and he's replaced he, he's replaced that spirit with his spirit of peace and he's proven himself to them and then they get lazy and complacent and they fall away and it's really sad when that happens you've got to stay in him you've got to remain in him and continue to receive his ministry you have to go through the sanctification process and receive that covenant accept what God has set you apart for. So the pattern of God is that he's going to minister to you and then he's going to minister through you. You have to understand that because I do see a lot of people, we're living in a really wicked time where people are lovers of self. And all of us have been lovers of self, thinking that God just wants to do all of this stuff for us. And he does. He loves us. He wants to, he has good plans for us. What no eye has seen, right? That's what Paul tells us. God's got good plans for those who love him. And not but, we have a cross. We have a lampstand. We have a purpose that we have to pick up. We have a purpose in the body of Christ. We are required to be involved in building his kingdom. So though he is going to heal you, he's also going to require something of you. He's going to speak through you, through the lampstand that he's been building in you, through all of these experiences that he has sent in your life. And it's an amazing thing. I mean, the joy that we get to experience from being used by God is incredible. And not but, there's also suffering that we have to endure. There will be persecution. We're not supposed to love our lives so much as to shrink from death or persecution or captivity. But this life is a drop in the eternal bucket. There is not much time left here. So we just need to make up our minds about whether we're going to endure or not, whether we're going to pick this up, whether our eternal life is more important than instant gratification, than belonging to this world or a clique. If you would like to learn more about your design, the design that God has given you for healing, if you would like to learn more about the method that I teach based on biblical principles, I highly recommend that you get the book Heart Known Series. Um, The link should be, the link is on my channel. I've mentioned before that if anyone is in the Pasadena area and you would like to purchase the book at a lower cost than what is sold on Amazon, you are welcome to contact me and I will um, arrange for you to be able to purchase a hard copy of the book. Otherwise, there you know you can get the Kindle version for ten dollars on Amazon. Um, you can also preview a good portion of each of the books for totally for free, so that you can make the decision about whether this is 
the route that God is taking you on. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you, and I'll see you in the next video.